All right, let's see what Alexander asks. My vision tends to get double before it gets blurry. Is it okay to do active focus on double? Kugelman Lab podcast. Can we choose a day and time for Iron Myopia fans to comment on the YouTube video? Yes. If he hears a name enough times, he will get curious. How do you know if my silly mu muscle spasm is gone? Should I stagger cylinder corrections with spherical corrections? Or should I start adding slight cylinder corrections in with a second and onward reductions? Hmm, those are all kind of awesome questions. I appreciate it. So the first question, my vision tends to get double before it gets blurry. Is it okay to act a focus on the double vision? So various reasons that you can get a double vision type of effect. One is if you have astigmatism or if you're basically if you're used to cylinder correction. So even if you didn't have astigmatism, but the optometrist sold you glasses with cylinder correction in it to correct for astigmatism, eventually you get something called lens-induced astigmatism. So it's not real as in the hardware of your eye, but your brain is compensating for something created by the lens. If that's the case, the ideal scenario is having differential glasses with generally cylinder correction that's lower than your distance glasses that don't give you that double vision effect or just a tiny bit, right? Like the ideal, ideal scenario is that you can get a tiny bit of ghosting or double vision, just a very small amount that your brain is then having an opportunity to resolve, right? Like that's ideal scenario. Take some time to get there. If you're new to this whole thing, that's not the starting point. The starting point is just reducing your blur horizon distance or just spherical diopters. But if you're getting double vision, the first question is why, right? Like if it's a stigmatism correction, you just want a little bit. If it is because you've been improving and reducing doctors and now you're getting some double vision, then it's time to not make more reductions, right? Like it's, it's fairly normal somewhere in the process of your reductions to hit a point where you're making a reduction and now you're getting some amount of double vision, which is kind of a separate questions. But the short version of that is your eyeballs change in shape, presumably, and your brain, your visual cortex is now having to readjust that signal to align properly again. So when you're getting that after you're making a reduction or in the process of making reductions, you want to stick with that until the double vision is resolved. Either case, it's not active focus resolving double vision or a misaligned image, right? Like active focus is just blur. What you're doing when you're resolving a misaligned image is your brain having to sort out how to align these images, right? Because you get a separate image from your left eye and your right eye. And even in the individual eye, the image can seem slightly misaligned. That's your brain's job to figure out. And it normally does that. Active focus is different because you blink and then things clear up with Resolving double vision images, you just look at the image statically. You're not blinking. You're not resetting the focus. It's kind of not the opposite, but it's quite different because instead you kind of want to stare at the image and wait for your brain to align it. And what you'll notice, it's more noticeable in dark scenarios with something like a digital clock, for example, where the lines are really defined, even though nothing moves and you have some double vision, right? Like the, the one, for example, if you say that, there's a sharply defined one, and then there's one that's blurry or offset somewhere. You'll start seeing it moving around. That is your brain working out where that belongs, right? And that's that's resolving that double vision. So you don't want a lot of that because it's super distracting and not helpful. That's why I'm saying a tiny little bit of that, and it's technically not active focus to resolve it. Hopefully that answers that. I just don't want to get into an endless ramble about how that works. The Huberman lab podcast yes i would love it if we collectively would comment on things i think it would make a huge difference i haven't figured out group wise how to tempt members or or incentivize people or coordinate that i don't know like alexander if you have ideas about that i'm all ears we have a huge facebook group and we have a pretty big forum but i think people are busy and people are not so much motivated to do things that are not benefiting them specifically so i don't know how to do that would love to andrew huberman i think is aware of us he i think only talks to people who are in a more um, mainstream kind of space as far as like having published studies or the right degrees which i don't fall into but i think it would be a good idea if we could coordinate that meow, 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 meow.